So the last time we were talking about temples. Today I want to talk about synagogue, but just a quick review. The first temple that was built was the Temple of Solomon, and that temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And then when the children of Israel returned from exile, Zerubbabel and the rest they built the temple and then Nehemiah came and built the wall. That guy was the prophet that God actually used to encourage the people to build the temple because when the exile came back, they were building their own house, they were building their own thing, but they didn't build the temple. It was a guy that God used to encourage them, to motivate them to build the temple. And after the temple was built, this was what a guy said. He said, who is left among you that saw this house in her first glory? And how do you see it now? Is it not in your eyes in comparison to it as nothing? <laughs> and, and that is actually understating it because the beauty of the temple of Solomon was absolutely unparalleled. Okay, it was absolutely unparalleled. Initially, we have the tent in the wilderness that we call the tabernacle of Moses. Then we have the first temple after they've been into the promised land, that was the temple of Solomon. That temple was destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar and the returning um, exile built the temple of Zerubbabel. And that temple was nothing <laughs> compared to the temple of Solomon. The temple you see in the New Testament was actually a beautiful temple. Okay, it was a beautiful temple that is commensurate to the temple, the, for the, to the first temple, the temple of Solomon. In fact, history tells us that that temple was still being constructed during the time of our Lord Jesus Christ, part of that temple. The first temple was destroyed, but the second temple, the temple at Zerubbabel was not destroyed. But that temple was refurbished. Ever the great actually beautify and expand that temple of Zerubbabel. So by the time you start talking about that temple in the New Testament, that temple was beautiful. That temple can also be called one of the wonders of his world. It has been totally renovated. It has been totally beautified. It has been totally re re restructured by Herod the Great. And that, that temple was then destroyed in AD 70 by the Roman Empire. Now, it is very, very important for you to know that history because oftentimes the history of the Israelite can be divided by the temple. So people talk about the first temple Jew and the second temple Jew. When we talk about the tent, the tabernacle of Moses in the wilderness, and when we talk about the temple, whether the temple of Zerubbabel or the temple that was refurbished by Herod or the temple of Solomon, what we said is that going into the temple is not going into a building. Going to the temple is coming into the presence of God. And that the temple is all about the presence of God is the central of their life, of their worship. It will come, going to the temple is going to the presence of God. We come to the presence of God to fellowship with Him and to fellowship with one another. And fellowship with Him, we talk about praying. So the house of God is the house of prayer. So going to the temple is not going to a building, it's going to going to a structure, it's going to meet with God, it's going into God's presence. And that will then tell us what type of attitude. The psalmist said, I will enter his gate with tears given in my heart, and I will enter his court with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And we, you remember we talk about the tent, which is also the same pattern of the temple, that the priest and the high priest cannot just enter that temple, you know, carelessly. There is a preparation that they have to go through. There is a way they have to dress. There is a preparation they have to go through. There is a consecration they have to maintain for them to be able to have an entrance into the temple. How much more us? Remember, we are now the temple of God. We individually and we together as the church. It's not the building that is the temple. It is us that does the temple. And then we have to think about our garment. The Bible talks about the garment of righteousness and also our attitude, our consecration as we we'll enter into God's presence. So going into God's temple is not about doing our own thing. It's not about building our own kingdom. It's not about pursuing my own agenda. It's not about, you know, worshiping other God. In fact, that's the worst that when we go into the temple, we are not going there to worship our own model of God. No, 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 no. We are not going in there to say, this is the type of God that we want to worship. And unfortunately, that is what happened to the children of Israel. They brought 
idol. They started worshiping idol rather than worshiping the true God. Unfortunately, in the church today, many of the so-called God that people worship are not the true God. We are worshiping our own version, our own model of God. We have created our own God that we are comfortable with and we are worshiping that in the house of God and that was the reason why the glory departed in the Old Testament and that was the reason why the building in the Old Testament was was eventually destroyed because there was syncretism where people are still worshiping God but they are worshiping their own version of God they are worshiping their own model of God okay and Baal remember actually and this is interesting that actually interestingly enough you can use the same word in Hebrew for God as you can use for idol so the question is not whether you are worshiping God the question is which God are you worshiping it's interesting today that many unbelievers say they don't believe in God but the question is which God don't they believe in okay you know the truth is that I don't believe in many of the God that some Christian worship I don't believe in many of the God that some preachers preaches okay I believe in the God of the Bible I believe in the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob I believe in the God of our Lord Jesus Christ I believe in the God that is revealed to us in the pages of the scripture unfortunately there has been so many pollution there has been so many syncretism nowadays that people are worshiping a different God and preaching a different gospel we have brought in Eastern religion into the church today unfortunately even in so-called charismatic and evangelistic churches unfortunately we lost the focus we lost the reason for for why God gave them the temple and that was what we were dealing with but it's all about the presence of God but something happened in the New Testament and we are going to mention that when we gone to the New Testament the temple was still there okay the temple was still there but also we have the synagogue which we are going to talk about but something happened let's read Matthew chapter 21 and we are going to read verses 12 and 13 and the Lord Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves and said unto them it is written my house shall be called a house of prayer but you have made it a den of Tears. We said a couple of things was going on when we get into the New Testament. We saw that there were new empire, new sheriff in town. There were different national regions, but also we have different religious sects. And in addition to the temple, we then have the synagogue. But there was a problem with the temple. The purpose of the temple have been perverted. The focus of the temple has been perverted. It was not about God's presence, but it was our about our own prosperity. It was not about God's kingdom. It was about their kingdom. It was not about God's plan. It was about our own plan. Even though they still have the, the religious, you know, arrangement, even though they still have the religious worship, they still have their process going on, but it was not about God and the Lord Jesus was angry with that and the Bible says he went into the temple of God this is supposed to be the temple of God my body your body our fellowship together is the temple of God but the Bible says they have turned it they have made it into the den of thieves they have changed the purpose there was no life in the temple there was no presence of God in the temple. There was no glory of God in the temple. There was no mercy of God in the temple. There was no grace of God in the temple. There was no power of God in the temple. Why? Because the temple has stopped being the temple. The temple, the focus of what was going on in the temple has stopped being the presence, the purpose, the plan of God. Like we read previously, it has become about themselves. It has become about their own plan about their own purpose about their own agenda about their own kingdom about their own desire they have brought idol into the into the temple idol of self idol of materialism even idol of pagan worship has come into the church and the power has departed and the power has departed and what is now happening is people are using you know mind power people are using you know psychology people are using demonic power people are using scheming and all sort of of ponzi scheme in the church because the 
power has gone and we are now generating our own power. We are using the power of entertainment. We are using the power of, of psychology, of motivation because the real power was gone. And the Lord Jesus said, my house shall be called the house of prayer. Why is the temple the house of prayer? Because the temple is the house of God. Because the temple is the presence of God. Because the temple is where God is, where the presence of God is, where the glory of God is. And we are now that temple. It's not the building that we go to on Sunday or midweek service. We are the temple of God. And we are the temple of God because God is in us. God, Christ in you, the hope of glory. We are the temple of God because God said, I will dwell in them. I will abide in them. I will be their God. They will be my people. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, the old has passed away. The new has become new. The Bible says, God said, this is the new covenant I will make with the house of Israel in those days. He will take the heart of stone out of us. He will give us the heart of flesh. And he said, I will give them my spirit. God in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And that is the purpose. And that is the operation of the kingdom. But what we see here, they have polluted the purpose. They have made the house of God the ten den of thieves. The Bible talks about these people who are buying and selling in the temple. And the Bible says, you overthrew the table of the money changers and the seat of them that sold doves. Now, this is very painful and very unfortunate indeed the house of prayer has become the house of merchandise the house of god has become the house of men the house of god has become the house of buying and selling i mean religious things are still going on the bible talks about people having a form of religion but we are stranger to the power thereof now the lord jesus said the second thing my house now this is the temple of god the temple of god is the house of prayer but now let us read isaiah which is where the lord jesus christ was quoting from isaiah chapter 56 verse 7 isaiah and we, we are in the middle of something that isaiah is saying he said even then will i bring to my holy mountain and make them join Joyful in my house of prayer, their burnt offering and their sacrifices shall be accepted upon my altar, for my house shall be called an house of prayer for all people. The temple of God, he call it the holy mountain, and he call it what? The house of prayer. So what we've done is we've gone from the talking about the Bible, we've looked at the Old Testament survey and where we are at the moment is here. And this is the reason why we study the intertestamental period so that we can have a good understanding of the New Testament and ask ourselves why are things the way they are so that we can have a better understanding of what we are reading. Praise the Lord. So let's talk about the synagogue today before we finish. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let's talk about the synagogue. I'm going to read a couple of scripture. So let's read first Matthew chapter 4 verse 23. And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases among the people. Let's read chapter 9 verse 35. And Jesus went about all the city and villages teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every diseases among the people. Mark chapter 5 verse 36. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he said unto the ruler of the synagogue, be not afraid. Obviously, that last story was the story of Jairus, the ruler of the synagogue. Now, all I want you to see reading through this was that the synagogue, there were many, many synagogues in, in Jerusalem by the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. Chapter 9 verse 36 says, the Lord Jesus went about all the city and villages teaching in their synagogues. So by reading this, we begin to see, number one, the reality of the synagogue. Number two, how many of them, there are many of them, and also what the Lord Jesus Jesus was doing in the synagogue we can see that the synagogue was a place where he could preach and where he could teach and the mark chapter 5 verse 36 talks to us about the ruler of synagogue in other words there were elders there were leaders that actually lead synagogue worship so so that is what i want you to see we read here in the book of Acts of the apostles chapter 9 verse 2 20 and straight away he preached christ in the synagogue that he is the son of god and by the way the he there is talking about paul so that act chapter 9 verse 20 was talking about when 
Paul went to Damascus, you remember the story? Actually, he was going to the synagogues in Damascus. He got letters from the leaders from Jerusalem and he was going to the synagogue in Damascus so that he can arrest Christians. But he got arrested on the way. Chapter 9 verse 20 talks to us about after Paul has already become a Christian, he was healed of his blindness. The Bible says straight away he preached Christ in the synagogues. Can you see the, 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 the plural? In the synagogues. Not just one synagogue. He was preaching Christ in the synagogue. Now, Acts chapter 13 verses 14 to 15 here was talking about Paul again and Barnabas. This was after they've been consecrated by the church in Antioch and sent out as missionary. Verse 14 and verses 14 and 15. But when they, that's Paul and Barnabas, when they departed from Paga, they came to Antioch and Pisidia. Now remember this are Gentile nation in Roman Empire. But the Bible says they went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and they sat down. After the reading of the law and the prophets, the ruler of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say on. Again, this tells you some of the things that goes on in the synagogue. Okay, so here we are, when we're talking about Paul and Barnabas, here they were out there in the in, in the city in the Roman you know empire and they they went into the synagogue and that was their culture that was their habit they were first of all going to the synagogue of the jews to preach the scripture so you can see over there also that in the synagogue they have the scripture okay because the bible says that after the reading of the law and the prophet so some of the things that goes on in the synagogue is that they will read okay the synagogue was like the community center where religious activity goes on remember the temple is in jerusalem but the synagogue is where the elders are where they do the daily reading of scripture where people come to learn and also actually they also do some um day-to-day -day, you know schooling of children in the synagogue so the synagogue serve a lot of purpose by the time of the lord jesus christ so so that's what i want you to see here so they read the lord they read the prophets and then they ask paul and barnabas if they have any word of exhortation and if you read this the, that story paul did stood up and started talking to the people the work synagogue means a gathering so the synagogue is where people go to gather it's like a, their courts their school where they go and they gather together and they hear the word and also where children go to learn the torah and to learn the old testament scripture the hebrew scripture and also to be taught their school that is where all these things was taking place so the word synagogue means a gathering but you understand what we said when we we're talking about tent and when we're talking about the temple, it's a gathering unto the Lord. It's a gathering unto the presence of God. It's a gathering to do the purpose and the will of God. We want to read Acts chapter 15, verses 21. The Bible says that for Moses of old time had in every city them that preach him, being read in the synagogue every Sabbath. Now that is very, very important. Again, that tells us what goes on in the synagogue by the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says Moses of all time had in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogue every Sabbath day. Every city have their synagogue. Acts chapter 16, verses 13 and 16. I want you to see the connection again of the house of prayer. On the Sabbath, we went out into the city again. This is talking about Paul and the team with him. On the Sabbath, we went out into this out of the city by a riverside where prayer was wont to be made and we sat down and spake unto the women which resorted there and it came to pass as we went to prayer a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us which brought a master a lot of gain by suit saying so what i want you to see there essentially is that when they go into the synagogue what they do is that they read the scripture just like we do in church today but understand that this is a place of prayer why is it a place of prayer it's a place where we go to meet with the presence of god now obviously at this point in time they have the temple <laughs> In, in Jerusalem but the temple in Jerusalem has become polluted anyway the temple in Jerusalem the presence of God is not there
there. They are not preaching the word of God. They are much more interested in merchandise. They are much more interested in themselves, in their own plan, in their own purpose, because the Libras have taken charge of the temple. Remember the, the, the Sadducees, they were the ones that were in charge of the temple in Jerusalem, and they were the Libras. They, they only accept the five book of Moses. They reject the prophet. They reject angel. They reject resurrection. They reject everything else but the five book of Moses. They were the Libras, the so-called progressive. Those were the people that were in the temple. The presence of God was gone. And where people actually do go to hear the scripture really being preached are in the synagogues. And the synagogue is where people go to hear the word of God. The church, just like the synagogue, is a gathering of people who pray. It's a gathering of people that come into the presence of God to pray, to fellowship with him. It is when we start focusing on something else different from God. Maybe we are focusing on the physical structure or maybe we are focusing on our own program. Now, there's nothing wrong in the structure. There's nothing wrong in our program. But if that is the central, if that's the focus, if the focus is on ourselves and on our comfort, then the problem is that the presence of God will not be there because God will not share his glory with any man. The focus of the tent, of the temple, of the synagogue, the focus was the presence of God. Now, let me round up with this and then we'll take this up from there by the grace of God. Let me, let me round it up this way. Remember what brought us here. What brought us here is that we are interested in the New Testament. But actually, we are focusing on this intertestamental period. That is what we are focusing on. And we say when we come into the New Testament, there are a couple of things, there are a couple of changes, there are a couple of different things that we see in the New Testament that make it important for us to focus on this period in between the Old and the New Testament. And what we're saying is that this period is not silent. That period is not silent at all. That God are spoken in the scripture a lot of things about this period, talking about the role of the prophet. And that is where the book of Daniel or the prophecy of Daniel or prophet Daniel comes in. I know in our own thinking, we will not call Daniel a prophet, but according to the Jewish uh, scripture, that book is a prophetic book. And in that book, there's been a lot of revelation that tells us about what happened in these 400 years. And as I conclude today, I'm going to remind you of what we said, why we are emphasizing and insisting on this role of the prophetic. And remember, I'm not talking about the prophetic in the way of this charlatan prophet. No, I'm talking about the prophet that brings the mind of God that bring the dossier the Lord. I'm not talking about the false prophet. I'm not talking about the charlatans like the, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees that is all about their pocket. No, I'm talking about genuine prophetic teachers and prophetic ministers of God. And that is where we see in the book of Daniel. And remember we said just like the prophet played important role. In all the three endings that we've mentioned, the prophetic also have something to do with respect to these 400 years. God has spoken into that period. More than that period, that word, that prophetic word has extended into our time. And we shall do well for us to pay attention to those prophetic utterances unto whom the end of time has come. Father, we thank you.